day 553 of this Trump administration. There is breaking news yet again tonight, and it is this. A source telling NBC News that former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen asserts the president knew about the June 2016 Trump Tower meeting in advance, was told about it indeed by his son Don Jr. before it happened. The source also goes on to say Cohen is willing to make that assertion to special counsel Robert Mueller. Now, you may recall that the June meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and several different Russian nationals, including, it turns out, an attorney with reportedly close ties to the Kremlin. In that meeting, Russians were expected to provide damaging political information on Hillary Clinton. Let's listen to what the president himself told three journalists from The New York Times about whether he knew about this Trump Tower meeting. I didn't look at it very closely, to be honest with you. Okay. I just heard there was an email mm -hmm. uh, requesting a meeting or something, yeah, requesting a meeting uh, that they have information on Hillary Clinton. And I said, I mean, that's standard political stuff. Did you know at the time that they had the email? No, I didn't know anything about them. So but you know, you get this. Must have been a very important. A ver must have been a very unimportant meeting because I never even heard about it. No one told you a word, nothing. Nobody I think we talked about this in the plane a little bit, but nobody. No, nobody okay. told me. I didn't know that. You know, it was a very unimportant. Sounded like a very unimportant meeting. And here now, Donald Trump Jr. speaking with Sean Hannity about that June 2016 meeting. A lot of people are going to want to know this about your father. Mm -hmm. Did do you tell your father anything about this? No. Uh, it was such a nothing, I, there was nothing to tell. I mean, I wouldn't have even remembered it until you start scouring through the stuff. It was, it was literally just a wasted 20 minutes, which was a shame. The president's lawyer, Rudolph Giuliani, told NBC News tonight that Michael Cohen is not credible and that he can't be believed. Giuliani added that he spoke to the president about this at length before, as well as other witnesses, and he says it's not true. Here is Rudy Giuliani talking about Michael Cohen on CNN, CNN tonight, excuse me, where the story first broke. Number one, he lied to people about taping them, both the president and other people. And not only that, he went to subterfuge in order to do it, like a, a whole little game which shows how pathological he is. There is also new reporting about the president's preferred mode of messaging. The New York Times reporting Robert Mueller is now examining, of all things, the president's Twitter postings. Michael Schmidt and Maggie Haberman broke this story. Michael Schmidt is standing by to join us. He and Haberman write that Mueller is, quote, scrutinizing tweets and negative statements from the president about Attorney General Jeff Sessions and the former FBI Director James B. Comey, according to three people briefed on the matter. Mueller is examining whether the actions add up to attempts to obstruct the investigation by both intimidating witnesses and pressuring senior law enforcement officials to tamp down the inquiry. Mueller wants to question the president about the tweets. Trump has been prolific in his attacks on both Sessions and Comey on Twitter and in public comments, and of course that's just the start of it. The Times also notes the president's written and verbal criticisms as well as his actions could all be woven together as prosecutors try to build their case. The president is facing yet another legal challenge. The Wall Street Journal reporting today that the Trump Organization's chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, has been subpoenaed to testify before a federal grand jury here in New York in the Michael Cohen investigation. If the name Alan Weisselberg sounds vaguely familiar, it may be because we heard his name earlier this week. I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. That, uh, yes, um, and it's all the yeah, stuff, all the stuff, because you know you never know where that company, you never know where he's going to be. Gets it, but Correct. So I'm I'm all over that, and I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing. Michael Cohen talking to Donald Trump about Alan Weisselberg on that once secret conversation that was released this week. Now, sharp eyed television viewers may also remember Alan Weisselberg from The Apprentice. He was a judge on season two of the show that aired on the NBC television network. A Democratic U.S. Senator tonight described Weisselberg as holding the keys to the Trump financial kingdom. Others have said today he knows about every incoming and outgoing dollar going back years to when Donald Trump's father ran the business. Good place to bring in our leadoff panel on a busy Thursday night. Michael Schmidt, Pulitzer Prize winning Washington correspondent for The New York Times. 
Robert Costa, national political reporter for The Washington Post and moderator in his spare time of Washington Week on PBS. Rebecca Davis O'Brien, reporter for The Wall Street Journal, the aforementioned Weisselberg story. And Saul Weisenberg, just to keep things interesting, deputy independent counsel for the Whitewater Lewinsky investigation. He was chosen by Ken Starr to conduct the grand jury questioning of President Bill Clinton. Uh, a big group tonight, but a lot to talk about at the same time. Welcome to you all. Mr. Schmidt, uh, tell us, even though it has to do with tonight's late development, we'll get to your piece of this story in a bit, why it would be so important for the president, if it turns out to be true, to have had advanced knowledge about the Trump Tower meeting, beyond the fact that it would mean his answer to your question. Yeah, so uh, basic level that, you know, he, he made false statements to the public about this, but that wouldn't be that different than many other things that have gone on during his presidency or his candidacy. The difference would be on a legal area. If Mueller believes that the meeting itself was conspiring with the Russians, that there is a legal problem with it, it brings the president into that area. It brings his knowledge and his role into more scrutiny. And if Mueller really doesn't like that meeting and wants to do something about it, it's more problematic for the president. Uh, Robert Costa, uh, I know you have been on the phone. I've been on the phone. Uh, source connected to the Cohen camp told me tonight what we've witnessed is a setup. Uh, what have you learned? Speaking to Mayor Giuliani a few minutes ago, he, he believes that Cohen is lying and he's going to question Cohen's credibility in the days ahead. He, he, I asked him if he, he believes Cohen's playing for a pardon, and he said if he is playing for a pardon, in his words, he's doing it in a stupid way. He said the president's not considering a pardon for Mr. Cohen. But you do see tonight uh, these sources talking to CNN and saying that the Cohen is willing to talk to Mueller. And the question will be, Right now, will, will Mueller now call Cohen to do an interview, to sit down and talk about that, that meeting uh, in 2016? Uh, let's talk Turkey here, and that is a lot of reporters are both pushing and chasing down a narrative that uh, here is news that Cohen can put Donald Trump uh, in possession of knowledge about that meeting. The narrative is that the Trump camp leaked the story because it's bad to own it in advance. What it also does, it diminishes the value of Mr. Cohen as a potential flip target for the feds, the Southern District of New York. Can you speak to that possible strategy? When you look right now at Michael Cohen's legal situation, he has not even been contacted by Mueller that we can report at the Post at this moment. And so his path ahead legally is challenging. He's under scrutiny. His offices and his, his hotel room have been raided. The Southern District of New York is looking into all of his business dealings. And now you have this float of information uh, to different sources tonight that he has more information about President Trump's activity and conduct as a candidate. And whether he's looking for a pardon from the president because he has all this information he's alleging or he's looking to cooperate with federal investigators, uh, there's a debate inside of Cohen's orbit about whether he's making smart moves at this moment if he is trying to save himself legally. Uh, all right, Counselor, that comes to your area of expertise. Saul, uh, what would be the legal implications of learning that the president uh, knew in advance about the meeting? Well, potentially, the crime involved here would be uh, there's a campaign finance law that says you can't accept aid from a foreign government during the campaign. But keep in mind that under that, that law is not a criminal violation unless you act willfully, which means you knew you were violating the law. So uh, Mueller would have to prove, first of all, that, that Cohen is telling the truth, that uh, President Trump knew about the meeting. He would have to prove that President Trump knew it was a violation of law to accept aid from a foreign government. And he would have to prove that anything really happened after this meeting, because at this, this was a, a quick meeting where they didn't have any dirt that they were willing to talk about based on what uh, we've been told by the Trump, Trump camp. And that was the end of that. So I think there is potential legal liability, but I think it's incredibly speculative at this point. The interesting thing will be. Uh, you know, if Mueller can tie it to any later efforts, uh, you know, by the Russians and any later evidence of collusion, which so far 
w w you know, we haven't seen at all. Saul, is ignorance any defense? And here's what I mean by that, if I may speak English. We've had a ton of people come on this broadcast and say uh, people came up traditionally through politics. Say, I would have called the FBI right away if I had known about this, anything about this meeting. Um, we're talking about an administration of political neophytes. They didn't come up through the classic channels. Would, would the ignorance of their obligation to notify the FBI be any defense in hindsight? Well, they don't have an obligation to notify the FBI. Your question is, there's a general uh, maxim, ignorance of the law is no excuse. But there are uh, exceptions to that, and this campaign finance law is one of those exceptions. Now, you said that everybody was a neophyte. There's one person in that meeting that was not a neophyte, and that's Paul Manafort. So that will be a very interesting development if anything comes from that. All the others were neophytes. I mean, President Trump, during the campaign, when he was a candidate, uh, talked about uh, Justice Elite, Samuel Alito signing bills right, rather than signing opinions. So you're talking about somebody whose knowledge of American government and civics was on the level of the average fifth grader. So it's, it's quite possible that he didn't know that this was a violation of the law. But also keep in mind, I know that's not what you're talking about with, the, with this meeting in Trump Tower, uh, campaign finance, uh, sorry, hacking laws, laws about hacking computers, they don't require willfulness. Ignorance of the law is no excuse with those laws. So you got to keep in mind what law we're talking about. Here with the Trump Tower meeting, you're talking about a campaign finance law that a person would have to know it's illegal to actually accept aid from a foreign government. And this button at the end of the sentence for our viewers. Tonight's story is the, the president was told by his son, Don Jr., uh, all of this according to what Cohen is prepared to share with prosecutors, that this meeting was on the docket. I want to remind you, Donald Trump Jr. in Senate Judiciary Committee testimony said, quote, I wouldn't have wasted his time with it. I never spoke to my father about it. That was September 2017. All of this brings us to Rebecca and the story we were chasing all day long until tonight's story. Welcome to our, our time clock. <laughs> Um, tell me the importance of this man to Trump the person, to Trump the head of a family business. How far back does he go? What would he know about? What kinds of things? Well, Alan Weisselberg was more than just a CFO. He was also a, um, he's also been the financial gatekeeper for Donald Trump himself and for his family for a long time. He's been around in the orbit of this, of this man and his businesses for decades. And I think, uh, you know, one question, he, he's surfaced in a number of uh, issues that have come up in um, the, his, he was involved in the foundation and he's been linked to the payments uh, related to the two women who um, alleged sexual encounters yeah. with Donald Trump. So, you know, we don't know again, and this is a reminder, of course, that beyond this, behind this like, volley of back and forth between the Trump camp and the Cohen camp that's going on right now and that we've seen play out over the last 12 hours since the story broke, there are two investigations going on right now. And the fact that Mr. Weisselberg was asked to testify before a grand jury, we don't know what he was asked, but the fact that this uh, man who has access to the innermost sanctum of the Trump organization was asked to speak about who knows what, um, you know, we should be paying attention to that. And that surely signifies something about what the interest of federal prosecutors is. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.